All right, the heat is on indeed. Welcome inside our studios here in Atlanta. It is your team preview for your Miami Heat. We'll get you A to Z on this upcoming season, next 30 minutes, giving you 10 points and let you know what to expect and getting some help. Smitty and Booze along with me, and we can now call this for the next 30 minutes Wade County. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How good is it? How great is it for the league, let alone just for the Heat fans who are watching, that D Wade is coming back for one more run? You know, I love it, Booz and Casey. Reason why is he's one of those guys, he's still exciting to me to get a chance to watch what he brings to the table. Yes, his numbers have dropped. He's not Wade falling nine times, get up 10, and putting teams on his back. But I will say, I was extremely impressed in the playoffs last year. He came out, he averaged 16 points, averaged 12 in the regular season. And it's fantastic what the Miami Heat organization do. They understand you have a guy like this, it, it helps the young guys so much and to move the organization back to where they used to be. That's the part that I love about it the most because they gave D-Wade an opportunity to pass the torch to the younger generation. Come back. Do it the way you want to do it. I, personally, I want to see him go out like Kobe, shoot as many times as he wants, pass as much as he wants. But you got to give you got to give the Miami Heat organization, top-notch organization, bringing him back. Going to be a great farewell tour. Um, D. Wade, one of the ambassadors of our league. Every all the young guys look up to him. He's had an incredible career, Hall of Fame career, and I'm excited he's coming back. Yeah, it also represents something that in this era, guys, in free agency in the four major sports, we don't see this anymore there aren't you know the uh, our own Zeke with the Pistons or the late Tony Gwynn with the San right, Diego right, Pot you don't you don't San right, Diego right, Pot you don't you don't see that anymore I know he left temporarily mm -hmm. but this is a guy who is so ingrained in that community that it's such a nice thing to see that he'll be able to say goodbye the right way that they'll know every home game is going to be the last time that family can go in and see him play. And I love it. It's, he gets this farewell season for him, and he deserves that. You said it best. I mean, he is the Miami Heat. And, yes, he went and played for Cleveland and Chicago uh, for a stint. But when you look at it, in my opinion, it needs to be a statue for Dwayne Wade in Miami. He's done so much for that organization, like you said, and that community. The community loves him, and I think he always know, knew that he wanted to be back in Miami. And like you see, he got a chance to go back. And I think Pat Riley and also Mickey Harrison did a fantastic job of bringing him back. And also, he can still play. Yeah. This is not where a guy that yeah. maybe not starting, maybe he's not the number one, two, or three option. But in playoff basketball, you can still get something out of D-Wade. Yeah, and down the stretch in games even late in the season, yep. he was getting the ball yeah. in big spots. Do you think he can still be that guy? What kind of a factor can he be boosted? I, th I think it depends on his body. You know, obviously, he's got a lot of miles on his body. A lot of finals, a lot of uh, USA basketball in the summertime winning gold medals. But like, like Smitty said, he's very effective. He can still score. He can still make the right play. And he can still teach. That's the part where you really want a guy like D-Wade to teach Deion Waiters and some of these young guys the ropes, how to be a good pro, how to come and work every day, clock in, clock out. But he will get the ball. He's going to score. He's going to put on highlights. We're going to be cheering, cheering him on, cheering Flash on. Um, but for me, it'll be more about the teaching to the next generation. Last year was not a fantastic year for Hassan Whiteside. Mm -hmm. More conversation about his own conversations than his play on the court. Forget the contract for a second because it's hard not to talk about it. The potential and the talent are both there. Can we see that come back? on the floor. Can that story be retold this season with him? You know what to me, Booz and Casey is mental for me because when we got a chance to fall in love with Whiteside, he was playing hard, blocking shots, rebounding, running the court, doing the dirty work. Like Booz said, in the younger generation he got that bag. And then now he's all we hear is I'm not getting enough touches. It's about offense. Right. I, I think for him is it has to get back to what got you that bag was rebounding, that guy in the middle playing hard, playing dirty. I think you got a little bit when you just want to say, I want to be all-star-ish. You right. can be an all-star doing the dirty work, and then obviously your offense will come. I think he started to look so much booze where I'm not getting enough touches to go along with his contract. It wasn't about him scoring. He will score, and he has to rebound and block shot and dominate that way first. What do you right. do as a veteran? Because you know you got guys like Dwayne Wade there, but if you're sitting in their spot and you're D. Wade or one of the vets on this team, you know it's there. How do you get him in the right state of mind or the white side of the ledger, right. if you will, going into this season? Yeah, well, he might have. You know, I've seen some clip of him and D-Wade working out on the beach mm -hmm. this summer and the gym working out as well. Maybe D-Wade was able to put a bug in his ear to get him back on that, that hungry hustle yeah. on the white side that we were used to before he got that bag. Um, that's, that's what they're going to need to get back to the playoffs, to get back to a dominant team in the Eastern Conference. Where they're, they're a tough out. They're a tough. You can't just come into Miami and steal a win here. you got to come. 
go through us. And, and to Smitty's point, he got to be that defensive anchor. I remember a couple years ago, he had a triple-double, and it was 10 blocks. How many times have we seen 10 blocks in, in, in the NBA in the last couple of years? So for me, if Hassan can get back to that hungry Hassan where he's dominating the paint, and I mean rebounding, blocking shots, only in the paint where guys are scared to drive in there and throw up a shot, then his offense will be the D-Wade's one of the best live passers, one of, one of the best two-guard passes we've had in the game. He'll get, he'll get him the ball in a place where he can be successful and be efficient. But if he can block shots and rebound and be hungry, he looks like he's in great shape. Mm -hmm. He can help that team a lot. Yeah, better with him than without him, which yeah, is something sure. we should yes. remember. Yeah, I think so. And I think everybody gets so caught up on They can't play wide side because it's small ball. Now, you still can. If he's dominating defensively and rebounding, they can. Boo said the best. He looks like he's in much better shape this year than last. I think he's going to have a good year. All right, let's talk about the direct of the team because we know every year Britton Bryan used to be in Memphis but it's kind of been this roster right I mean Spo has always had this group Smitty seemingly overachieving they're always in playoff contention or in the playoffs what do you see from where are we right now with Miami I mean, I'm looking at it. I mean, we're looking at just the stats. I mean, he's 41 plus wins in nine of the ten seasons he's coach and eight times they've been in the playoffs well, they've missed D-Wade a couple of years. LeBron's been gone and Bosh. This is what I love about Spoh and his organization. Yeah, everybody talks about their cap space. They don't have room to acquire Max Guy. They can move some guys around, but I love the organization and Pat Riley did. We're still going to be relevant. Yes, we don't win a championship. We might not get to the Eastern Conference. But if I live in Miami, this team is still making playoffs, still gives you a chance and hope. I think this chance, what they've done is because of Spo. The way he's been coaching, I think he's been very underrated. Miami gets driven all the time, booze as a sports center, if you will, by star quality. Yes. It's always been that kind of a place. Right. You know, who, who are you going to see at Prime 112 kind of an area? Right. We know that, right? You know you're going to see all three of us because we're, <laughs> right. we're hungry. Right. Can, can they win this way, or do you think they need to, as Smitty kind of alluded to, at some point find the stars that want to go there and then alleviate some of this money to create that space for them? Yeah, well, for this season, they had, you know, D-Wade's farewell tour. So they're, they're going to sell out every game. People are going to come see D-Wade play. But moving in the future, there may be a star away, maybe two stars away from being really good and being a contender to co compete with Boston and Toronto and, and, and uh, those teams up there. But at the end of the day, right now, they're, they're mediocre. They're, they're a middle-of-the-pack playoff team. I'd mm -hmm. say they're a playoff team. I think they make the playoffs again this year. Um, but they're not going to knock down Philadelphia's door this year. They're not going to knock down Boston's or they're not going to knock down Toronto and get to the, 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 the finals. But they are going to be in the hunt. If they make a trade, you know, there, there's rumors about that Jimmy mm -hmm. Butler trade. Maybe that improves them a little bit. Maybe they make a deal for somebody else. But if they make a, make a move, they're about a player or two away from being really good. Yeah, that's, that's the question is as the year goes on, do you try and get a little greedy when you get towards trade deadline, find a way to be creative to give Dwayne Wade a chance at a run, a chance to surprise, because they're going to probably be a playoff team if they're healthy enough. Mm. But you wonder if D Wade is healthy if they don't get a little bit greedy come deadline time, try and push it. Yeah, away. I think um, you got to be calculated. You don't want to look at it and mortgage your future for somebody to just to try to win today. When you're knowing, I, I would say if you're a Miami fan, you're knowing you're not winning the championship. You're probably not getting to the Eastern Conference Finals. But like, if you do have that opening, if you can say, "Ed, we're not saying it's going there." Jimmy Butler, and then they, we always know there's a disgruntled veteran that can really play around all-star trade right. time. You add another guy, and you look at the Eastern Conference, we know the Boston, Torontos, and Phillies are the elite, but after that, the Miami Heat with a couple players could move up into home court in the playoffs. take my game to the NBA and, um, you know, see what the future holds for Dwayne Wade. With the fifth pick, the Miami Heat select Dwayne Wade from Marquette University. I was happy that I was going to Miami. It's a place where I feel I belong. You know, I'm so happy to be here. I'm going to just try to bring everything that I brought, you know, in college. Just playing as hard as I can. It was a dream come true. I'm like, I'm starting as a rookie in the NBA. It was exciting, and I had a great group of guys along with me. Turn inside the way down the middle. Yeah, he came in. Yeah. Oh, he's hit by Popovich. Foul ball. Oh, 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 oh. Wade with a steal. With two. Wade puts it up for the win. Yeah, oh, baby. Dwayne Wade with the game winner. Dwayne Wade, you are a giant. 
It's a dream come true for Heat fans. Blocked by Wade, and Wade at the buzzer. Got it! Wade, Wade, the half point. Oh my goodness, he is living large. Wade, pitch it up. It's yes! good. Cross them. That would make me look more like a hero. Do what you do. Don't go. Yeah. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Yeah. It's over. And Miami wins the NBA title. Thank you so much. You're my hero, Wade. We hereby became today as Dwayne Wade Day. We want to thank you once again by giving you the key of this county. <laughs> oh, Dwayne Wade. What's up, Mama? Dwayne we was kids once when we was growing up that we didn't have everything we wanted for Christmas or the holidays. But one thing we did have is we had family, we had each other, and we just remember the times that we enjoyed ourselves. You got to smile real big. Believe in yourself. Believe that you can overcome anything and do anything. The Wayne Wade is back. Accomplishments will be remembered in this house and in our hearts forever. In 2003, I could see the future of the Miami Heat and drafting Dwayne. The best thing this franchise has ever done. Number three, Dwayne Wayne. Fantastic piece on D Wayne right there. We look at the group that he has with him, Smitty, what stands out to you when you look at the depth chart here? You know, I think versatility. You can have a lot of these guys, uh, probably six or seven guys can play two or three positions. Also, 90% of these guys, other than some of the guys I don't know, they are going to play hard. And that's the one thing you know, that looking at that roster, they're going to compete. They're going to come out and play extremely hard. They're going to give themselves a chance night in and night out. This, same thing. They got a roster full of guys that are going to play hard. You can switch defensively. They can do a good job offensively sharing the ball. I like the kid out of Bayou back in the white side. He plays with pure energy. A uh, good group of guys. Yeah, Haslam back again, which let's not forget, even though. Hey, that's, that's it's for a organization to keep UD around. He's still in great shape, but yeah. that Boo said it best. That's another guy that's basically teaching yeah. for the on and off the court for the organization. Last year for Wade County, hopefully going to be a good one in Miami. Always good to hear from him. He sits down with our own real parish. He's a champion. He's an MVP. He's a future Hall of Famer, the man that needs no introduction to Wade. Wade joins us. So you basically lead the Heat in every statistical category. What made you <laughs> want to come back for one more season? Uh, well, I mean, I think for me, um, just listening to a lot of my fans, my family, my friends, and I think everybody, you know, wanted this, th to say goodbye, you know, and a piece of me wanted to say goodbye too. You know, you, if you have the opportunity to to go through your last year, you know, kind of, you know, and play on your own terms, and and for me to be back in Miami at the same time doing that, I wanted to get the opportunity to just go through this year and just give a chance to to salute, you know, say my thank yous and say goodbye to all the people who have supported me through these 16 years. So, like you said, 16 years, your your resume speaks for itself. What is left for you to accomplish personally and for the team? Well, for the team, um, you know, to continue to take steps every year, you know, and, and as you, when you're in this position where you've been from, where you've went from a championship organization into a rebuild situation, um, and you have a lot of young guys that you depend on, you just want to see them get better every year individually and, you know, as an organization. So last year we, you know, got a chance to go, the year before they missed the playoffs, last year we went to the first round, lost in five. This year you want to do better, so you want to continue to take those steps. Uh, me, individually, you know, I always go into a season trying to have a better season than I had the year before, whether it's the bar is high or the bar is low as it was last year. You know, you just want to go in and have a better season individually um, for yourself and, you know, hopefully mean mean something to your team and be there for them when they need you and when they, when they can count on you that you're there, um, you know, to, to rise to that challenge. So, you know, that's what I'm going to try to do. And also I want to be a better leader. You know, in my last year I want to make sure I leave something um, that these young guys are going to remember.
Now, you spoke about being a leader. There's another leader on your team, Hassan Whiteside. He's shown flashes of brilliance over the years. What is it going to take for him to be more consistent night in and night out? Yeah, um, he has shown. You know, he's done some things here that we haven't seen. The, some, the game of basketball didn't even see, you know, too often, you know, when he first came on the scene. Uh, so for him, first of all, most important is him being healthy. He wasn't healthy last year. And, you know, but he, I, I give him a lot of credit for, you know, toughing it out and, and trying to give it a go. Uh, just coming in this year feeling healthy, feeling more confident in his body. Um, and in this game, you know, if, if it's going to be 20, if it's going to be 25, if it's going to be 30, whatever the coach decide to play, I'm just going out there and being just an absolute monster. You know, being a beast on the court on both ends of the floor and making sure that he changed the game every moment he's in. Your former teammate and best buddy LeBron James is now taking his talents to the West Coast. So what is yeah. it going to take for you and the Miami Heat to get a top four seed in the Eastern Conference? <laughs> Uh, well, you know, we for my last year, I thank him for leaving that void. You know, even though it's some good teams in this, you know, conference still. You know, when you look at Boston, you look at Toronto, and you look at Philly, and so forth and so on. Those are the top three. I uh, hope I ain't missing nobody uh, that that from last season that you know shown that they have the talent, they have the ability. In another year together, they're going to be tough uh, with some other teams. So, um, you know, we health is important to that. You know, the team that's, that's is healthy is, is better than the team that's more talented and better. Uh, so we definitely got to be healthy. And we got to, you know, we got to, once we start tomorrow, we got to get right on top of what we need to do, how we need to do it, and play our game the way that we can and what's on our roster and, uh, and, and not focus on what anyone else is doing right now. When you take a moment to reflect on everything that you've done in your career, is there a particular moment that stands out that you always go back to that you love the most? I think what I, what I love most about my career is I've been able to play and be whatever it, I've needed to be. I've been able to play any role that's been asked of me. When I came into the NBA, they asked me to play starting point guard. I never started a point guard before. Um, before that, you know, not especially since I've been older, I did that. Then they asked me to, um, in the playoffs that year, to take the league a little bit and, and start becoming the, the alpha. And then they asked me to take a step back when Shaq came. You know, I've been able to, you know, what I play with, great players or what I play with players that hasn't been of that caliber I've been able to be everything that the organization and my teams needed me to be um, and it's no different now you know as I'm at the end of my career last year you know I came off the bench and when I came back to Miami I was asked to come off the bench and trying to play the best my role in that as well an Olympic team came off the bench try to do my best in that so that's what I'm most proud of is that I didn't go through this and only was able to do it one way I was able to go through this NBA career and I was able to play you know great in whatever role that I that I was able to star in. Well, you get a look at some of these scheduling notes, the swan song for Dwayne Wade and some of these big Eastern Conference matchups that Miami's hoping are meaningful in games against, for example, the Sixers and the Celtics. They need a lot of wins for that, so let's play a little more or less. 42 and a half. Smitty, are we going I'm, higher or lower? I'm going north of that. I'd say they're wearing 46, 47 games. Um, Cleveland is not going to be challenging for the top spot, and I think this team plays so hard. I think they'll be ready at the regular season to catch a lot of teams off guard. I think they have 46 or 47 wins. Yeah, I'm going to piggyback off that. I think they win 45, 46 games this year. They're going to play hard. They're going to give D-Wade the best effort as he goes out the door. And uh, I, got, I, got them, I got them maybe in the seventh, sixth, seventh seed. And you've got to figure karma and energy both are going to be on their side in that building. It's going to be sold Wade out. Wade. Oh, every game. Is fine. Every sold game out. sold out. It's going to be a game. tough ticket to get. So is the reservation at Prime 112. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I hang out with them. We'll see you next time on NBA TV.